In this episode of the Audacity Channel podcast, we're going to talk about three things. We're going to talk about sample rates, bit depth, and bit rate. So let's get started. Hey friends, Mikey Adams here with the Audacity Channel podcast. I teach Audacity a lot, and one of the questions that comes up repeatedly concerns sample rates, bit depth, and bit rate. What are the differences in those? What are they? And why does it matter? So let's talk about it a little bit in this episode. When you open Audacity and you're looking at the user interface, on the bottom left corner, there's a thing called project rate. And then in parentheses, it has the letters HZ. HZ are short for Hertz or samples per second. Audacity defaults to 44,100 Hertz or 44,100 samples per second. That means that the audio that you're recording is sampled 44,100 times every second. That's a lot of sampling. That's a lot of CPU usage. Have you thanked your CPU lately? Because your CPU works very hard at converting your audio from analog to digital. And here's a little bit of background for you. Digital audio hasn't always been around. It's a fairly recent phenomenon in the history of the world. Audio conversion from analog to digital began really in the early 70s. That's when it first began to emerge in earnest in terms of the music industry. When I say analog audio, I mean the audio that's leaving my voice right now and hitting my microphone. That little piece of audio right there is analog. Analog audio is what we hear around us day in and day out. If we're driving in our car listening to the radio, the audio that we hear coming out of our speakers is coming at us in analog form. If you're at work and a coworker is speaking to you or you're in a meeting listening to someone speak, the audio that you're hearing is analog audio. Analog audio is what normally hits our ears. Even listening to this podcast is analog audio. Whether you're listening to it through speakers or earbuds or headphones, what you're hearing is analog audio as it arrives at your ears. But a computer can't do anything with analog audio. I can talk to my computer all day long and it's not going to respond. It doesn't know what to do with it. But if I convert it to digital audio, it suddenly knows what to do with it. In other words, the analog audio that I'm speaking needs to be converted to ones and zeros in order for the computer to be able to do something with it. And in order for Audacity or whatever DAW you use to be able to do something with it. And so conversion from analog to digital is extremely important if we want to do anything with our audio. Now, back in the olden days, in a recording studio, there was no digital equipment. Everything there was analog. If you look at old photos of old recording studios, you'll see that. There'll be a multi-track tape recorder. There'll be hardware versions of noise gates and of compressors and so forth. But there's nothing digital there. You had to capture the audio in the moment, and if you didn't, it was gone. You couldn't come back later and look at a digital waveform and do any post-production on your audio that way. There were no waveforms. You could do post-production on it, but it was captured on an analog tape or some other analog device. And so even the idea of a waveform is a fairly recent phenomenon. Prior to the immersion of analog to digital conversion for music and audio, there were no waveforms. You could listen to your audio, but you couldn't see it. Now we can both see it and listen to it. And because we can see it and listen to it, we can do more work on it in post-production to make it sound as good as possible. If, when recording your podcast or audiobook, you're using a USB microphone, inside that USB microphone is some electronic circuitry called an analog-to-digital converter. That analog-to-digital converter is converting the analog signal from your voice as it hits the microphone into a digital signal, sending it down the USB cable and into your computer. If you're using an analog mic, like I am right now, and you're running it through an audio interface, that audio interface unit is converting the analog signal from your analog microphone into a digital signal and giving it to the computer. 
Audacity sees that and knows what to do with it. And so it samples it at a certain rate to reproduce it. And as it does that, it prints out that sample for you in the user interface in your track as a waveform. So let's circle back around for just a moment to this sample rate that I talked about when I first started or this project rate in Audacity in the bottom left corner. Again, it defaults to 44,100 hertz. That number is not there by accident. That number is not just something that someone pulled out of the air and said, hey, this sounds good. We ought to maybe try this. There's a reason why 44,100 times per second has been around for a while. There's a thing called the Nyquist theorem. Yes, the Nyquist theorem. And you thought Nyquist was just a type of plug-in. Well, Nyquist says that the upper range that a human can hear is 22,050 hertz. Now, that's really high. Most people can't hear that high. But the Nyquist theorem uses that as a foundation for sampling analog audio. And the Nyquist theorem basically states that if you double the sample rate up to 22,050, you'll get a good and accurate reproduction of the audio that you're capturing. And so 22,050 hertz, which again is extremely high, times 2 is 44,100 hertz. And so they've doubled the sample rate of the highest possible frequency that the human ear could possibly hear in order to get a good reproduction of the audio. So that takes some of the mystery out of why 44,100 is such a popular number. It's also the number that became the standard for music CDs. In the late 1970s, Philips and Sony collaborated on creating music CDs. And in so doing, they chose that number, 44,100, as a sample rate for music CDs with a bit depth of 16 bits. We'll talk more about that in just a moment. But using the 44,100 or 44.1 kilohertz sample rate allowed for up to 80 minutes of music on a CD, which was far better than a vinyl LP. And that's one reason why CDs became so popular and really took off. You could get a lot of music on those. And all of that music was sampled at 44,100 with a bit depth of 16 bits. It still is. That's still the standard for music CDs. Unless, of course, you're burning an MP3 onto CDs, which you can do now, but back then you couldn't do that. So even though 44,100 is the default sample rate in Audacity, you can change that. If you look at the Preferences window in Audacity and click on the Quality tab, you can change that 44,100 to another value. A lot of people like to use 48,000 when recording audio for a video. But that Quality tab in Preferences is where you can change that. Once you record a piece of audio in Audacity or import a piece of audio in Audacity, you'll also notice that in the track header on the far left of the user interface, you have the same information. It will tell you the sample rate of the audio that you just recorded. If you recorded audio and you've changed your preferences to 48,000 hertz or 48,000 times per second, once you record a track of audio and you look to the left into that track header, you'll see that reflected there. It will tell you whether it's mono or stereo. It will tell you the sample rate and it will tell you the bit depth. So that's a little bit of background on the 44.1 kilohertz sample rate and why it's there. If you change your default sample rate and preferences to 48,000, then your audio is going to be sampled 48,000 times per second. And the quality is going to be even better than sampling it at 44,100. But your file size could be a lot bigger depending on how long your recording is and whether or not you've got a lot of instruments or a lot of people talking or what's going on in the audio. So there's a trade-off between quality and file size, or at least there can be if the audio that you're recording is quite long. So generally speaking, the higher the sample rate, the better the reproduction of the analog audio that you're recording will be, because it's sampling the analog audio more often as it converts it to digital. But what about bit depth? What does bit depth mean? If we open the Preferences window in Audacity and we look at that Quality tab, we see that the second option down is called Default Sample Format. That's Audacity's way of saying bit depth. And if you click on that down arrow in that option, you'll see that you have other options. You can change it from 16-bit 
to 24-bit or 32-bit float. That's called a bit depth in every other world except Audacity, where it's called the default sample format. Well, what does that mean? Well, an easy way to remember what bit depth is doing is to remember that each of those 44,100 samples or 48,000 samples or whatever you've got it set to contains a number of sampling points. For example, if my bit depth is set at 16 bits and my default sample rate is set at 44,100, then each one of those 44,100 samples per second contains 16 bits of information. In other words, 16 sample points within each sample point. So if we multiply 44,100 by 16, that's the amount of information or the amount of data that we're gathering from our audio per second. I'll let you do the math on it, but the number's way up there. And so again, your CPU is hard at work. And have you thanked your CPU lately? If my default sample rate is at 44,100, and I select 24 bits for my bit depth, then each one of those 44,100 sample points contains 24 points within it, where it's gathering information about the audio that I recorded. Information like amplitude, equalization, echo, distortion, whatever your audio contains, it's contained in those sample points. And so if you multiply 44,100 by 24, then you've really got some astronomical numbers going. 32-bit float is even better. 32-bit float allows for better possible recovery of audio recorded above 0 dB. 32-bit float is good if you have a portable recorder and you're headed to a concert and you want to record the audio that's obviously going to be very loud. Using 32-bit float will make recovering that audio easier. So let's recap before we move on. The sample rate of our audio is the number of samples per second that your audio is sampled as it's converted from audio to digital. The bit depth is the number of data points within each one of those individual samples. And that's all work of your CPU. It doesn't matter if you're using Audacity, Reaper, GarageBand, Logic Pro, Adobe Audition, whatever DAW that you use, relies on the CPU within your computer to do these mathematical conversions. Sometimes Audacity gets a bad rap as being sort of an entry-level DAW, but you know what, at the end of the day, every DAW relies on the CPU. Having a robust CPU and adequate memory in your computer is more important, in my opinion, than the DAW. I can buy a thousand dollar DAW and have a really bad CPU and not much memory and my audio is going to suffer. I can download Audacity, which is free, and have a computer with a robust CPU or CPUs and a lot of memory or a lot of RAM, and I can create exceptional audio. That's the goal of the classes that I teach, is to create or learn how to create exceptional audio using Audacity. But let's press on. Let's talk about bit rates. The bitrate has more to do with the file that we export than the sampling that we're doing as we're recording. Once we've recorded our audio and we're finished editing it and we want to export it as an MP3 or an M4A, whichever we're going to use to upload to our podcast, the bitrate becomes important. Remember that MP3 files as well as M4A files are compressed files. When Audacity makes a recording, it's saving that recording in the project as a WAV file. A WAV file is uncompressed and lossless. It's a real good representation of the original audio that you recorded because it's uncompressed and it's lossless. But when we export it, we're compressing the file to get it smaller and as a result, there's some loss to it. That's why an MP3 file is so much smaller than a WAV file. So let's use MP3 files in this example. When we export our project into an MP3 file, we have the option to select the bit rate. The bit rate in Audacity is called quality. So if you go to export your file as an MP3 in Audacity, it presents a window to you with some options. The first option is bit rate mode. If you're doing audiobooks, that always needs to be constant. 
If it's not constant, it won't pass ACX requirements for the chapter that you're exporting. The next option that Audacity gives us is called quality. Quality is Audacity's way of saying bitrate. A good way to remember what bitrate is referring to is how much of that original audio that's in that WAV file, how much of the original quality of that audio, I should say, that's in the WAV file do we want to retain? Generally speaking, the higher the bit rate, the better quality or the more accurate your MP3 file is going to reflect what's in the WAV file. So when we look at that quality window in Audacity, when we open that up as we're exporting our MP3, we have a lot of options in there. The highest option is 320 kilobits per second. That's the bit rate. That is going to give you the highest quality possible in your MP3 file as you export it. Again, if you're exporting for ACX audiobooks, the lowest bit rate that you can have is 192 kilobits per second. ACX requires that the bit rate of your MP3 be 192 kilobits or higher. That ensures the best quality possible in your audiobook as you're compressing and converting your WAV file into an MP3 format. But there's other options in there that you can select. Generally speaking, the higher the bit rate, the larger your file is going to be, and the better it's going to sound. Now, if you're just recording an audio podcast and you don't really have much music in it, or maybe no music at all, you can drop as low as 64 kilobits per second in your bit rate, and it's probably going to sound fine. Experiment with it and see. If you've got a trained ear or someone listening to it with a trained ear, we'll probably be able to tell there's a little bit of quality lacking there. But for most of us, you're not really going to tell unless there's a lot of music in it. If you've got a lot of complicated music or complicated uh, information, other tracks in your project, they might suffer. But if you're just recording straight, you know, spoken word audio, you can get away with that most likely. But again, keep in mind, bitrate is basically saying how much of that original audio quality do I want to retain when I export my file into this compressed format. And again, generally speaking, the higher the bitrate, the better quality the audio is going to be. So that's a basic overview of sample rate, bit depth, and bit rate. And again, I do get asked that question from time to time, so I wanted to turn it into a podcast episode. Hey, thanks for joining me on this episode. Just a reminder, I do teach Audacity at the Audacity Bootcamp. You can get there by pointing your browser to audacitybootcamp.com. And once you're there, you'll see that I have three courses. The first one is called Audacity Step-by-Step, -Step, Beginner to Advanced. And that will take you from a beginner level in Audacity to a more advanced level. And it's a course really designed for any spoken word content creator like podcasters or audiobook narrators because it's a deep dive into the inner workings of Audacity. We start with the fundamentals and then we move into more advanced topics. The second course that you'll find there is designed specifically for ACX audiobook narrators. It's called ACX Audiobook Production Using Audacity. And I show you in that course how to create exceptional audio for your audiobook production using only Audacity. We don't venture out of Audacity into expensive third-party plugins. And the third course that I have there is free. It's simply called Audacity Version Updates. And you can enroll in that for free. There's never going to be a cost. Whenever Audacity comes out with a significant update, I put a video there about what that update includes and any changes that have been made. So again, all of that is available at audacitybootcamp.com. If you want to see more about what's going on with me, you can go to learnaudacity.com. So thank you again for joining me here on the Audacity channel. I'll let you go for now. And until next time, you all take care.